Hi Sagittarius, welcome to your August 2023 Astro Taroscope with me, Raphael from Radiant Reality. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for joining me. Quick note, these readings are for your sun, moon and ascendant sign, but if you're only gonna watch one, I do advise that you make sure it's your ascendant sign. It's gonna be the most accurate for you on that day-to-day -day level. With that said, <clears throat> If you are a continued subby, you know Rafi loves you. If you're new to my channel, please don't forget to like, share, and if you should so choose and it resonates, hit the subscribe button. Also, um, I completely forgotten what I was going to say. Um, I use whole sign Western Tropical Astrology for those of you that need to know what system I'm using. And uh, before we start, as always, I would like to bless my decks of cards with a proper brain fart there. Uh, I'd like to bless my decks of cards with all forms of love, light, peace, prosperity, and abundance. And I pray that the messages that come through are ultimately clear and concise and they help you on your path to your highest vibrational good. So, the first transit that I would like to look at for you guys over the course of August, you have on the 2nd of August, Mars is going to trine your ruling planet Jupiter. This for you, ooh, okay. Got one card that's just jumped straight out the deck. Uh, so Mars is gonna trine your, um, your ruling planet Jupiter. So Mars is, <sighs> Yeah, first things first. So um, the thing with this transit is it comes exact on the 2nd of August. So for about four or five days before, you can kind of utilize that energy um, up until the point where it becomes exact, right? So you've got, you, it's not just like, oh my gosh, I missed the day and it's done. You got about four or five days prior, right up until the point. Okay, so. Mars is trying your ruling planet, which for you is residing in the sixth house. Jupiter in the sixth house will have been bringing a measure of healing for many of you, uh, maybe also potentially highlighting to you where you've had uh, health issues that you've ignored, right? That tends to be what happens with the sixth house because the sixth house is a maintenance house. It's how you maintain your, you know, your world, the things that you want to keep, your physical health and vitality. Um, it's in a trine to Mars, right? So this is a lot of energy, it's a lot of power. And you know, because it's across the sixth and 10th house, this is potentially helping you expand your career in some way, shape or form. This is a great time to kick off a project. It's also a really good time to begin a health and fitness regime of some kind. Uh, Mars in the 10th is squaring your ascendant. So it might be also conveying some kind of sense of irritation around career matters, but this transit in general, Mars trying Jupiter, it's providing the push and the oomph that you need to really make some headway with all of these kinds of things. Um, there's a lot of focus on work at the moment and this potentially sees you expanding your reach in some way, but the hard work and the attention to detail are needing to be put in and that's kind of what, what Jupiter is doing for you. Jupiter is an energy of growth and expansion, uh, belief. It's also uh, an energy of cohesion between the inner and the outer realms. Now, one of the things like in my mind as I'm talking about this, I've got this really clear image and I wanna convey this to you. Because it's an energy of expansion, and the sixth house is all about the details, right? So you might think, okay, these energies are kind of at odds. Well, they're not really. What this is allowing you to do, you know, like when you're looking on an iPad, you can you can do that to a picture and you can zoom into it. Jupiter is helping you expand the details so that you can look at them clearer. If you're anything like me, without my glasses, certain things just look like a big blur, right? Um, you know, things up close look absolutely fine, but from far away, everybody just looks like a bleh. Um, so what this provides you with is the ability to zoom in on something to understand it in a better way. So I actually think this could be really nice for you. For this transit, you have the uh, Page of Swords, you've got the Three of Wands, and you've got the Five of Swords. So if you are willing to use your both deductive and your argumentative powers, you might be able to persuade somebody to kind of step in for something here that maybe they have either, you know, you might be able to convince somebody to help you do something when it comes to your career or your profession or your work. Uh, whew, excuse me, where maybe you haven't had the results previously. 
I like this for being able to charm the birds from the trees. Um, that Three of Cups is a card of reunions and get-togethers. And with the Five of Swords, it's like if you're willing to, to maybe prod or poke somebody in the right kind of ways, you might be able to get them to kind of play ball on something or with something that you're hoping to get off the ground. Okay, so I, I kind of, I don't know, I like this for some reason. Maybe I'm a bit of a masochist. <laughs> now, on the 8th of uh, August... Mars and Mercury are going to come into a conjunction for you in that sixth house, right? So Mercury coming into, uh, sorry, in your tenth house. Mercury coming into a conjunction with Mars. This is potentially something in your career sector that is being communicated to you or you are communicating it to others. Now, Mercury does very well in the sign of Virgo because it's exalted in that sign. Um, and then because this is in a trine energy to both Jupiter, your ruling planet, which is now in your sixth house, Uranus, which has been in your sixth house for some time. And now the moon is in the sign of Taurus as well. The moon is exalted in Taurus, right? So these energies are now trining each other. That's a lot of energy across that sixth, twelfth house sort of uh, space. This is really helping you. It's providing the right conditions to bring something to life. For now, it might sort of like be, you know, it's not necessarily out there in the world, but it's out there as a concept and now you're trying to bring it into, into reality. It's something that's taking shape and form. And I love this because it provides the right kind of energy that you need to make something big happen for yourself when it comes to the career. Be careful here because this is a lot of really great energy. Don't compromise your beliefs or your integrity to get ahead if you're asked to. So if somebody presents you with something, you think, wow, this could be really great for my career, but I don't really believe in their message or whatever. Don't do it. As a Sagittarius, you will kick yourself for this later because your integrity is so much of who you are, all right? I mean, what you do is completely up to you. And if you think, well, you know, fuck it, Raph, it's too good an opportunity to pass up. Hey, listen, you do you. Um, there's just a feeling here that something might not necessarily be as upfront or on board as you like it to be. And so I'm just saying, you know, keep your wits about you. For this, you've got the King of Cups. You've got the King of Pentacles, two kings, look at that. With the Six of Swords. So two kings represents minor council. And with the Six of Swords in tow, this does suggest an international connection of some sort, possibly for some of you. It could also show up here though, that you are having some kind of information or consultation. So this could be, excuse me, it could be with a doctor, it could be with a consultant of some sort. This could be, uh, you know, also information that comes to you in a way where you're, maybe you're not necessarily looking for that or the opportunity arises and, you know, maybe it takes you further off your path or on a bit of a deviation from where it is that you thought you were going. There's nothing wrong with that. I just think that maybe you consider sort of what's going on long term. Um, and like I said, if it forces you to step outside of what you really believe or, or etc., you just want to keep your wits about you with that. All in all, though, I actually really like this transit. On the 24th of the month, just to get a little bit more serious now, and this one's going to hit you particularly uh, quite strongly because you're a mutable sign, right? So what we've got here is what's called in astrology a mutable T-square. So a square in general makes us uncomfortable. It provides enough conflict, challenge or issue for us to create change, right? It's something that pisses you off, basically. And then you say, you know what, fuck this, I'm not having this experience again. So you get really proactive about it. Because it's a mutable energy, this is an energy of change, right? It's a change adaptation engine that is kind of being sort of implemented in your life, whether you want it or not. The moon is playing the anchor in this T-square. So the moon is doing this, and then there's two planets that are opposing each other as well. Hence the T-square. So the mutable T-square involves you as a part of this. So the sun is going to be in Virgo. Uh, Saturn is obviously over there in Pisces. So these two are kind of squaring off, well, opposing each other. And then as if that wasn't enough, the moon is in your sign. So this is happening across what we call in astrology, angular houses. The first house, that's you, Sagittarius, which is where the moon is. The fourth house, 
uh, which is Pisces, which is your home and environment sector, and then the seventh house, uh, the tenth house, which is your career. So this is the push and pull between home and career, and then there's you trying to get what you want out of life at the same time. So. It could quite literally, you know, and the angular houses tends to show up more on that real world level, like you see it more on a practical day to day level. So the moon in your sign is highlighting your emotional needs, but also your deepest desires and possibly your fears as well. The th these things are to be considered and it's like what you want appears to be career success or recognition and attention. And then this is coming into like a bit of a conflict or a reality check that comes through the home and environment where some kind of burden or responsibility makes itself very much known and present. So what you want versus what's expected of you from others comes into conflict here and your emotional needs and, and fears are potentially heightened. Uh, and, you know, the, the funny thing is, one of the lines that I put here as well is to tell for you to tell yourself you in this whole equation are not irrelevant. Your wants, needs, desires and even your fears and where you need comfort are all very important. For this, you've got the Empress card. So your literal environment is being highlighted as well as your desire for more pleasure and enjoyment. You've got the World card. That's a beautiful community. And then you've got the Queen of Wands. So for a select few of you, you might have to draw a really strong boundary with friends, community, with people that you are connected to or tied to in some way. And for you, it might also, for a select few of you, this may be a very big consideration about where you live in the world, how you live there. Now the Queen of, Pen the Queen of Wands sorry, is a fire sign person, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. This is likely to be somebody that's older than you and likely to be somebody that really doesn't have anything to prove. This is somebody that's really done their thing. And this could be somebody that can either play a supportive role for you or really get you to consider the reasons that you're having the experiences that you're having at this moment in time. And then finally, because you've got the Queen of Wands and you've got two kings here, right, in very close proximity, this does suggest this month is going to be just as much about other people as it is about you. So relationships seem to be a bit of a trend and a theme that are going on here. And then finally, the last transit that's happening for you on the 27th of uh, August, Mars is coming into the sign of Libra, which is in your 11th house. Mars is going to see you paying a lot more attention, right? So you become feisty, energetic, passionate, powerful, direct, uh, maybe irritated or irritable and potentially even a little bit forceful around your, uh, you know, the gains that you get from your business could start to increase. So maybe you make more money from what you do from work. That could be nice. But it also potentially sees you being more active through or on social media. It could be a really good time to work on or plan a campaign of some sort for social media. Maybe not necessarily to execute. And the reason I say that is because Mars is a malefic energy after all, right? So it, it can cause conflict. So maybe you want to do all of the work now, right? Because Mars is going to be in your 11th house for about five to six weeks. And then you put it out at a later date. All right. So it could also be a very busy time for connections, friendships, maybe even networking as well. Uh, this might be on a broader scale, though, rather than like the locality. All right. And for this, you have the Seven of Cups with the Page of Pentacles and the Fool card. So I love this for new ideas and endeavors, especially for things for like your longer term future. But I will say it looks like there are a lot of ideas and potentially too many irons in the fire. Mars is coming into your 11th house, which is the, excuse me, which is the 11th house for you is Libra. Mars is in its fall in Libra. It's all the way across the, the, the zodiac away from its true home. And so for that reason, this energy is it's a little bit more erratic and it's hard to kind of focus that seven of cups with the page of pentacles lots of you know and the full card lots of new great ideas but potentially spinning your wheels because you're doing too many things at once streamline your focus all right and then for your moons for your moons you have 
So the Leo, uh, the Leo new moon, sorry for you, is taking place in your ninth house. High aspirations, goals, and dreams. This is a natural house for you as well, the ninth house. You've got the gate 61 and inner truth. That Leo new moon is really gonna bring you a lot of deep emotional and potentially um, spiritual insight. And it's really important that you pay attention to them because something's gonna be highlighted to you here that maybe you haven't seen previously, all right? And remember the new moon is a dark moon. So that's something that you wanna be you know, fully mindful of. And then for your um, Aquarius full moon, you have the gate 60 and limits. And this is in your third house. So that full moon is really gonna highlight to you where maybe you get in your own way, where some of the burdens are coming from in your day-to-day -day experience or on that daily level. And both of these combined are speaking to your skills, your knowledge base and or how you grow or show up in the world and potentially the change of environment or place that you actually need in order to flourish moving forward. With that said, I wish you an abundance of all of that good stuff. Have a fantastic month. Let me know in the comments how it shapes up. Take care and I'll see you soon.